Hi, this is Frank and Bali, and you're watching the Carvin Channel. Mm -mm. Just recently, I was at the factory and uh, I was really there, hands on. I was getting dust on me, really in the process of the instrument. It was great to see them being built, you know, the machines that carve away, but at the, uh, the final finishes are still done by hand. And, um, you know, it was great to get in there and really get the perfect neck for my playing taste and the, and the perfect uh, neck heel uh, shape also to my taste so I was very happy and check out the footage in the factory you'll see just how amazing the whole process is and how detailed this is what we start with folks this weighs about feels like five pounds of mahogany what I would call a diamond in the rough look at this how's that for a fine piece of match maple so you can see how uh, the guitar is cut out or it will be cut out from this. Look how thick this is. It's not cheap maple here, folks. This is the real deal. And then uh, the maple gets glued to the top of the mahogany and all carved out. This maple is still about a half inch, if not more, three quarters of an inch thick at the bridge. Very solid top. No, uh, no plastic binding here. The binding is actual maple. Actual um, the thickness of the top, which is really the finest you can get. That's as good as it gets. That's incredible. And the precision? Oh yeah, two, two ten thousandths of an inch. Two ten thousandths yeah. of an inch. It's like taking a hair and splitting it ten times. That's the accuracy of this machine. Wow. Split hair ten times. Getting out for the electronic. There it goes. Wow. Okay, that was the back side that we did, right? Yes, uh huh. So it's still got a bit of a lip on top. Uh huh. That'll come off in the next phase. Okay, amazing detail. The, um, this is the underside of the maple top. Let's have a look at this. Wow, it is kind of a rough cut, isn't it? Yeah. If you look at it closely, it's all quite ridged. Like you can tell where the machine went over each time. Kind of corrugated. But still, the essential cutout is there. Now we're going to wrap the, the top of the body. Yeah, he's going to do the top now, and uh, then after that we'll go back to fitting the head. Wow, look at that. And here we go with the hollow sides. It's like a Michelangelo. <laughs> there you go. It's a slow process, but you know, good quality comes slowly. Now look at that for a little fine. Bit lighter, isn't that? Woo! Considerably lighter. Nice. There it is. Hey! So should we glue the top on this thing? Why not? Very nice. So now we'll put the top on there. Uh-huh. Out of glue, like you could no. almost pull it apart. Well, if you if you put a lot on there, it all squeeze out and be running all over the place, and you don't want a lot of glue running inside your guitar. So you want to glue both surfaces so that you don't have any dry uh, spots. Uh, 
Yeah, that press puts down over 8,000 pounds. 8,000 pounds? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't get your finger caught in there. No, you don't. After it comes off the squeeze... You, you, well, then it gets you, loaded back into the other machine. And on the top part, cut out like this, with the right. F-holes and everything else. Right, if you do all the ball landing, the routing for the, for the neck, the right. holes, pickups. Right. Beautiful mother of pearl. No plastic here, folks. Around the edges. I'm surprised how little glue yeah. there is. Yeah, you don't need a lot because like I said, it's all going to go out anyhow, any excess, so you don't want to... Well, it's not that, it's just to, to, to maintain the strength and the yeah, integrity no. of the instrument, I'm surprised. Yeah, well, this, this glue... The old days they had screws and stuff holding it in. Sure. Yes, but you have no screws it, there. It's actually stronger at the glue joint. If you were to take and snap that neck and body, if you could exert enough force, it's going to break somewhere else than right at the glue line. Really? Yeah. Here's one further on down the, the line. Further production. down the line? Yes. This one it's here. after the body's glued. Yeah, it just needs some more hand detail. Oh, that feels beautiful already. So it's starting to take a little more personality. Starting to look more and look more like a my guitar. Very beautiful. It just feels amazingly solid. Solid and yet it has that airy resonance. Yep. Nice jazz guitar. Yep. Without feedback. Without feedback. I, I had a thought that when I look at the guitar, I'd like this to be on more of a, like, or even this 45. See how there's a 45 degree? Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of a straight lip, you know, which is a squarish kind of end to it, if it were to come back or be a little more graceful, that, that curve in there, instead of straight up, a bit more, I don't know how much wood we have here to play with, probably not a lot. Well, the only thing we could do is we could take this heel, drop it lower, and that Again, will angle it more here and I here. see. That might be uh, worth a try. I would love to see how that would... Uh, because you know, it's it's very it's very good where it is, and but it could be angled a little bit more too. If that's what's going to help you get that uh, slight angle on there as well, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, there's room to move it up just a little bit. All right. So get to exactly what you want, right? Oh. you look at the guitar like this, right? Looking to have this part be slightly at an angle too, like at a 45. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but I hate to no, lose right. one no, <laughs> no, in the experiment, but no, you won't. This two things, you know, turns off a lot of guys. Oh yeah, that's it my friends. Now see we have a little lip here still. It still has to be done by hand. That has All to be done by hand, okay. All right. So we'll take and hand. I think yeah, that's extremely that close. That's beautiful. Fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That cutaway is so sweet. Look at this. This is really uh, one of the main features of my particular version of this guitar, is that the heel comes way, way, way down, and these uh, cutaways are sort of on an angle. Very sexy, beautiful looking cutaway there, if you ask me. You can see the heel uh, it really comes right down to basically the last fret or second last second to last fret. And we've come down even uh, substantially further than that. Mark at Carvin was looking at me very strangely a lot of the time going, what do you mean? What do you, you want to take more off? Yes, please take more off. <laughs> we kept taking more and more wood off the, until finally I just sat with one of the, the, 
you know, one of the builders, and I said, okay, let's just get some sandpaper and, uh, you know, a machine, and let's get it down to exactly where it needs to be. So now, uh, this was the, the fourth prototype, and so I think the fifth version of the guitar will be the quintessential uh, final version of the guitar. And it goes even further back than this. It's beautiful. I love to have just a f absolutely free and clear playing surface. So uh, there's no uh, less rigidity or strength to the instrument uh, because of the nature of the... There's a lot of wood at the end of this neck that goes under the pickup. Uh, it really is a very strong seal, a strong um, joint. Now that I'm with Carvin, I'm, uh, I'm really excited uh, about the potential because these guys make uh, a lot of great instruments. So uh, I hope this is not the only one we designed together, you know. I hope that there's uh, a lot more where this came from. So.